114 telescope, you will find a perfect portal into the realm of deep sky observation. This Newtonian reflector produces great views of planets and bright deep sky objects like star clusters and nebulae. It comes with a special mount that allows you to attach your smartphone to the telescope and use the AR telescope app to locate and learn about constellations and planets. As you move the telescope across the sky, you will hear facts about the planets, constellations, and other objects in the app's database as they come into view. With the National Geographic Star App 114, you also get two eyepieces and a 2 times Barlow lens for multiple magnification options. Exploring the stars is easier with the National Geographic Star App 114 Reflector Telescope. And we're back. And we are, well, we're not back. We're, not we're back. like well, here. We're here. Finally. <laughs> but we're Anyways. back in the studio. That's, <laughs> That's where right. we are. That's right. So today we're talking about the National Geographic 114 Star App Telescope. Okay. And why the star app? Because, I mean, apps make everything so much easier nowadays. Well, that's what it's all about. You know, the hardest thing to do mm -hmm. with the telescope, you know, when you're working with beginners, the thing that's really tough for, for beginners to wrap their head around is how yeah. do you find this stuff up in the sky? Look up. Right? But what do I know what yeah, I'm yeah, looking at? Yeah, yeah, but if you're out and you see a what zillion stars. What do stars, I know what I'm looking at? Exactly, right? exactly. So even experienced amateur astronomers Many of them don't know all the constellations in the I sky. Don't. I don't. Right? And there's still, I know a lot, but yeah. I, I, I can't tell you exactly where Draco yeah. begins and ends, and that's a faint one. It's, it's a tough one. Mm -hmm. um, but anyhow, uh, but that's what the Star app uh, does for you, is it helps you learn the constellations, which is step one. That okay? is a good step. Right? Great step. And then the next, another big step is to help people identify the planets in the sky. That is another big step. Right? Because a lot of times they think that it's just another star. How yeah. do you know? You know, so anyways, the star app's going to help you do that. Um, and so we kind of showed uh, uh, some people using the telescope and yep. how the star app uh, fits on the telescope and everything. But now we're going to Open one up, build Ooh, it. Build it. Okay. It's an unboxing video. That's right. Sweet. So we, this is. So we're going to show you we'll, we'll how difficult. Here. Yeah, well, I got something sharp <laughs> on me. That's right. Okay. Remember, kids, to set, practice safe. Yeah, that's right. No running with scissors. No running okay? with scissors. That's Don't right. Go towards yourself with scissors. That's right. That's right. Okay. There we go. And we're just going to do this, and then. To make it easy, this is a little trick I know from opening up lots and lots of boxes. Look at that little trick. Right? And this is how the box will actually come. Yeah. It's, oh, let's flip it around a little bit. There you go. And that's how it's going to come right out of the box after we flip it and that's right. maneuver it. So we've got like some little tabs that are on the bottom. Yep. On the back, on the back is some useful information about what comes with it. So it uh, looks like it comes with a smartphone adapter, a yep. two times Barlow. A uh, Palossal 9.7 and a Palossal 26 millimeter. Right. Awesome. Right. That's a great little starter kit. So technically starter. you get four eyepieces for one. Basically. That's because right. of the Barlow. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. So we got two little tabs here. Okay, got an instruction booklet on one end. We'll kick that off to the side. Yeah. These are open. For a lot of people, they, they like to see a video of people struggling. unboxing it. Struggling. Struggling, yeah. Exactly. Take that over here. It's not too much of a uh, no. package rage here. Okay. So you got you got two boxes basically. One of them is going to be the tripod box yep. and one of them is going to be the telescope box. Okay, so we're going to start with the tripod. Okay. I'm just going to set that aside. We've got two tabs here. Okay. We got one. Yep. One handle. All of these are prepackaged and wrapped up. Yep. Every single one of them. Make sure I get more. There we go. Yeah, we're on the knobs. Yeah, the little. There we go. Plastic bag. There we go. Yeah, don't put that over your head, Tyler. Oh. So, right? Make a nice hack, though. <laughs> right. 
Okay, so the tripod is already pre-assembled. Uh, you'll notice that there are, on the bottom there are knobs here. There's something called a spreader bar up here. And this is a, um, a knob that will attach the, the head mount board. head. Exactly, exactly. And so here we go. I'm just trying to try to set that down just like so. So we do have the accessory tray here. Yep. And so you're going to push this down to flatten it out. Oh, and then the accessory tray is keyed. It's got like little notches here. Yep. And right here is some little notches. And so we're just going to place that over it and give it a twist. Get that all the way over. There we go. And it just and then turns. It, yeah. And so these tabs now fit underneath those little struts. And let's see if I can rest this down on our thin table. Maybe okay. you can hold that tight. I'm going to hold it. Yep. Let okay. secure it. Use a wider table than what we're using. Or you can use the floor. Or you can use the floor. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> you know, uh, build it on a uh, carpet. Yes. You know. That way, it, less travel distance in case it gets Okay. Up. So this is the actual telescope itself. That is beautiful. What is that, yeah. carbon fiber? It's carbon fiber wrap, so it's a carbon fiber look. Okay has something called a rack and pinion focuser. Yep. And it's going to come complete with a lens cap. This is a reflecting telescope. This is a Newtonian reflector. Yep. It works a little different than what a lot of people think it's going to work or how it, they think it's going to work. You know, That's so true. we'll see a lot of people put the eyepiece in the back to try to look up like this. And I can't see nothing. I can't see nothing, exactly. Or the way you use it is you, you take the open end of the telescope, the starlight comes through, reflects off the mirror, hits a secondary mirror, and yep. then comes up to your eyepiece or your camera. So, <coughs> we'll talk about there that. There is another box in there, I do believe, and I believe that's the head mount. That is the mount, yes. And it should be the other accessories that are and in And the there. other accessories. So there is There's a the smartphone adapter. Yeah, and that's a Bluetooth connection. Bluetooth connector. Okay, this is the. There's the head mount. It's got a knob on the bottom, a little washer. So what you want, you know, it has two. You have a very thin paper washer. Plastic. Plastic washer that goes on top. Okay, so that's on there, and that gives. That, that plastic washer gives some smoothness to it, which is nice. And then you just got to screw in the attachment knob onto the bottom. And then you got a tension knob here on the side. That's right. We're just going to just gently snug it so it doesn't move a whole lot. On top of the mount is a compass, okay? So you can get some bearing of which way is north and which way is south, east and west. There are two eyepieces, a 9.7 and I think it's a 25. It's a 26. Is a tw 26, you're exactly right, okay? So, and those are plossal eyepieces, so. Those are good quality eyepieces. If you're a beginner, that doesn't mean a lot to you. Uh, there was a guy named Plossel who designed, the, uh, came up with the design of these eyepieces just <coughs> like this reflector is called a Newtonian named after Isaac Newton. They do a lot of things in astronomy this way. And this thing is called a Barlow. And guess who that was named after? A guy yeah, named Barlow, Barlow. right? <laughs> and so, so here we go. And the Barlow doubles the magnification of each eyepiece. And so you can get from 19 power to 103 magnification yep. by using different combinations of the eyepieces and the Barlow lens. But look, we're almost completely assembled right now. This was just a cap that... Uh, came out of the focuser itself, and what we're going to do is put on the handle. And what's that handle for? That handle locks the head. You turn that around a little bit. There we go. It locks the head, and it also lets you control the telescope. So mm. some people might call that a pan handle device. Okay. All right. Over here is just a locking knob. We're going to back that out a little bit. And then we are going to put this just like this, 
So this is, again, this is a Newtonian reflecting telescope. And the eyepiece goes towards the sky. So the sky's going to be up here. Your eyepiece is going to be up here, OK? And to move that up and down, we're just going to release that, that controller and move it up and down. It's, you're totally allowed to hold the end of the telescope if you want to study it as you're moving it around. That's fine. Yep, you won't see your hand at all, believe right? it or not. This lens cap that goes in here has, it's a double lens cap. This is a little cap that can remove, and it makes a smaller opening. And this is when we're out looking at primarily like planets or the moon, but you see the stars twinkling like mad. That would tell you the uh, stars don't twinkle in space. No. What, what's happening is the atmosphere is rough, okay? Imagine we live, uh, you know, if you lived in a, uh, underneath a pool of water, okay, and there was wind blowing waves on the water and you were trying to see something uh, through the other side or you were trying to look down at a quarter that you threw down to the bottom of the pool, if you have waves, you can't see the quarter very well. You might see if there's something shiny down there, but if the... If the waves, if the water was perfectly flat, glassy, you could take a magnifying glass or you could take a binocular or a telescope and look down through the water and read the date on it, okay? By reducing the diameter of the lens, you actually can sharpen up the image. This is an old trick that's used not only by amateur astronomers, but by professional astronomers too. And they reduce the aperture and this can uh, make the image look sharper for you when needed. Okay, so I'm just going to pull that back out. And um, got one more. And we do have one more. And so this guy. This is the main attraction. Yep. Yeah, and so let's turn this around. Go for it. Okay. This has like a little crosshair in it to help you aim it. It's on the arms. Right. Oh, here we go. There we go. And there are, little, there are little holes here that slide right over these pins. And you just squeeze it on, and it's ready to go. OK. So um, I think we need to put this down on the ground. Let's put this down on the ground. Let's show how the legs can extend. OK. That one's done. There we go. Ooh, my piece. And then we can do it just like right. that. That's right. A That's lot of people are nervous around telescopes. Why? Because uh, they, they see a, a scientific instrument, and they think it's super delicate. OK? And actually, the telescopes are quite rugged. Yeah. And uh, you know, they're designed to be handled you know, I'm not going to, I'm never really that super careful with the, with the telescope when I'm using it, um, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, um, you know, but you want to, you know, you want to really get into a telescope and mm -hmm. use it. And if you're afraid of it, you're not going to use it. You're not going to use it that much. You're going to oh. tell the kids to stay away, that kind of thing. And, yeah. and so this is something that uh, you really want to... Uh, you know, kind of reduce that, that fear of, of being with the telescope. You'll also see how high it is. Uh, I'm about five foot nine, uh, five foot nine and a half, and this is a perfectly comfortable height for me. Mm -hmm. You're a little bit taller, Tyler, little so you're going to be bent over a little bit. Over. Right? But, uh, but this is, you know, I'm not the tallest guy, I'm not the shortest guy, so somewhere in between. Uh, you notice that I just put in one of the eyepieces. Now, telescopes change magnification with the eyepieces themselves. And um, so with the 26. 26, I'm going to get 19 power yep. with this, OK? Yep. If I put um, the Barlow lens on it, and this is how you use the Barlow lens, you take off the lens caps, you throw in the Barlow lens, you, you tighten it up, and you put the eyepiece on it. Now this doubles the magnification. Now, a lot of people think that telescopes are magnification machines. They're not. Right? They have limits. They do have limits, exactly. And 
So when you're starting your observing session, you want to start at the lowest magnification possible. This does two things, okay? One of them is that it lets you to see to the furthest distance that you can because telescopes are light gathering machines, okay? Right? And so we've got 114 millimeters of aperture. Correct. It's gathering light over that entire mirror surface. It's like dilating your eye to 114 millimeters. Correct. If I could do that, I could walk outside at night and see everything. Nebula, galaxies, and everything without of the course. use of a telescope. But I don't have eyes that big. My eyes are about six or seven millimeters yeah. in diameter. Okay. And so the telescope is working as a light funnel, it's gathering the light. It's hitting the light on like a bowl-shaped mirror. It's hitting a flat mirror, which is coming up to the side, up to the eyepiece. Mm -hmm. This was Isaac Newton's design. Uh, and uh, at the time, uh, the scientific community in, uh, in England awarded him the Lucasian chair at Cambridge for this design. It was so revolutionary. I'm not sure what that is, but it sounds it's, important. It's a big, it, it's <laughs> it's a big a, deal. Yeah, Stephen Hawking occupied this position. Oh, mercy. Okay, so it was very high uh, recognition. But uh, anyways, having the lowest power gets you the brightest images. Uh, mm -hmm. So we want distance with the telescope. Well, it also gives you a better uh, an idea of what's around in the sky. Exactly, right, you, because it's jump, wider. It's wider. If you jump straight into the 9.5 or 9.6, you're really punching through stuff. That's, That's what right. you're doing. That's right. So, um, but once you are, have landed on an object, then what you can do is you can find it, center it up. Let's kick you over here just a little okay, bit there. Okay, thank you. Is that better? That's a little better. Okay, all right. So then what you do is you'll... you'll Toss in the eyepiece, the 26 into the 2x Barlow lens, and this but that also cuts. That gives you more magnification, so it technically gives you a whole other eyepiece. That's right. So would it be around a well math one double or double? Uh, it's, it's double so it could be so like 30, 35, 36, maybe a little bit more. Double 38, 38, 38 magnification. Okay, so that's a nice medium magnification. Yep. 19 is real wide field, which is great for looking at what. Uh, you can look at Andromeda's galaxy. You can look at the moon for sure. Right. Uh, double clusters, uh, open clusters. Big uh, things, big right? Big things. Pleiades. You can look at a lot of stuff. That's right. Comets, if they got a nice Comets, long tail. Comets, if they got a nice long tail. I mean, you can see a whole lot of stuff, That's right. believe it or not. That's right. And even if it's not big, but it's really distant and faint, uh, you need to get as much light to your eye as possible because we're going after distance. And it is the light gathering that lets you see the distance. And so you'll... The lowest power may be your favorite view through yeah. the telescope, right? Yep. But, uh, but we all, most of us live in urban environments, yep. uh, oh, right? Yeah, that's the next so, thing I was going to talk about. Yeah, you may not be in the darkest skies, okay? Mm -hmm. When you increase magnification on a telescope, something else that happens, which is kind of cool, is the background sky starts to look darker to you in the, in the yep. eyepiece, okay? So what you would do is you would find something that go, okay, that looks interesting, uh, but if I have better separation mm -hmm. of that nebula and the background sky, it would look better. And so you sneak up on magnification yep. by, you, you know, you don't jump increase. from lowest, exactly, yep. exactly. And so those are all, that's, those are great tips there. So, so you're gonna want, your eyepieces, your Barlow lens, and everything very handy as you're working with it because this is, this is the astronomer's paintbrushes, right? <laughs> so, right? And so there's, and this one, you see this little guy, this is the 9.7, okay? Uh, that, this eyepiece with that Barlow lens combination will give you the 103 magnification. Um, and that's about tops, okay? That, that's pretty strong. It's pretty strong, exactly. So if we're looking at Saturn or Jupiter, okay, uh, yep. both of which are up right now. They are. And but Mars is coming up right now. Yeah, the, the opposition of Mars. And so that, that happens December 8th, and that's when Mars will physically get to its closest point to Earth, okay? So that happens about every 26 months or so. Yep. Okay, but, all right, so now you're, but you're beginning and you're learning how, and a lot of people starting out don't have Tyler. No. With, you know, out there saying, you know, now let's look over in this constellation, that's Ursa Major, or that's Cassiopeia, or that's Draco, or that's uh, Delphinius, okay? Um, 
But, you know, if Tyler's there with you, he can say, okay, let's point the telescope over in that area. And by the way, you know, this constellation is named after whatever uh, god and, um, uh, you know, the you know, the mythological, mythological, exactly. Yep. Everything was made. In All right. Group. So, so the, the bread and butter of this particular telescope is the function of an app that comes with it. That's right. That is the best option. Because if you don't have a Scott, a Kent, reflector or telescope. a possible astronomical society that's sure. local Astronomy to your club. area, right. this thing would be your bread and butter. That's right. Because it will literally teach you exactly what you need to know that you will learn in an, just an event group, an astronomy society. <clears throat> Excuse me, or just local here. That's right. So a lot of amateur astronomers, when they're first beginning, I went through this process. Mm -hmm. You know, Tyler went through this process. You're starting to learn about the constellations and where they are, okay? This is part of you understanding and reconnecting with the sky, reconnecting you to the universe, you know? So you live in a galaxy. You know, we're on a planet going thousands of miles an hour around the sun. The sun's going hundreds of thousands of miles an hour around the center of our Milky Way galaxy, and our Milky Way galaxy is moving over a million miles per hour yep. to another galaxy that they say one day will collide with in billions of years, okay? Right now, we don't have to worry about any of that. You got time, okay? <laughs> we got, we got and you got time, time, plenty of time to look at, time. you know, so. And your telescope is your window on the universe. So, uh, so whether, you know, you're a kid, you are a teenager, you're a young adult, you're a senior adult. Um, it's never too early to start learning no. about astronomy, no. you know. And so, uh, but this app is what's going to help you. So this is called Star App. It is free for the download, yep. okay. Um, and uh, so it's you first bring it up. It's going to show you the oh, is home screen. <laughs> There's the home screen. Sorry, yeah. Whoa. Okay, the home screen, and it's going to say star seeking, and so we press that. And once I do, I need to put this into the holder, and this will make a Bluetooth connection. Let's see if they, our camera guy can get the uh, view. Okay, and then I'm just going to hit Bluetooth, and it's going to start searching. And should just make a connection here, and I'll find out here in a moment which it did, okay? So right now, you can see the horizon view, okay? I'm going to have in to start my 26 millimeter eyepiece, my low power eyepiece, okay? And because it's all connected, as I move this around, it's already showing me the constellations up in the sky, okay? And, you know, there's, there's options in here for you to find uh, out more information. It's like a little encyclopedia of, uh, of what's up in the sky. But um, uh, basically, it's point and go. And right, and right now, I'm looking at, here, at, the, at this. Uh, and I can't, unfortunately, I can't do this. I really need a little camera to kind of show you what's going on in the screen. But there is a curved dotted line. And that is the path of the solar system objects. It's called the ecliptic path. And so I can just follow that path, and then it's going to show me where a planet is. Okay? Well, be darned. Right? And so now I would just focus up the eyepiece and sell, until I see the stars really sharp. By the way, stars are always pinpoints of light, even through the world's largest telescopes. Yep. They remain pinpoints of light. I had the conception that... Um, uh, when, I, when I was 10 years old, that if I increased magnification, I would make the stars look bigger. Mm. And so I was throwing the image out of focus, thinking I was actually using it properly because it's thrown out of focus, so that starlight does look bigger. Yeah, it gets bigger. Right? All right. But what you want to do is you want to bring it down to a hard focus where you see pinpoints of light, okay? The difference is, is that you're looking up at the sky, you see pinpoints of light, you look through your telescope, you see pinpoints of light. But here, since we're gathering more light, yes. we see thousands of more stars, okay? That may not be immediately obvious to you, okay? But with the help of the star app, we're going to be able to go to some things that are fainter, uh, like Orion's Nebula, the Andromeda Galaxy, and yep. stuff. And those are almost completely invisible to you with the naked eye. So, Depending on where you live. Depending on where you live, that's true. That's true. Uh, so that's, that, is, that kind of uh, shows you the assembly, some observing tips, you know, 
use from lowest to highest power going in steps, um, read about what's going on in the sky, uh, you know, learn to use, uh, uh, you know, proper lighting. You'll find out that white light, uh, even a small amount of white light is your enemy to the astronomer. So um, some of the things that we have uh, that will help you with that regard is a, um, we have a red flashlight. This is a nice accessory. You can, uh, you definitely want to use that because once you, take the 30 to 40 minutes to become dark adapted to the night sky, you don't want to take a white flashlight and then have your eye, eyes contra contract. Oh, yes. Right? It's bad. <laughs> it's bad. It's bad. It's Even bad. a small amount. And it, it makes amateur astronomers who have gotten dark adapted kind of angry, okay? Yes. <laughs> or perturbed. They they'll, say, perturbed. they'll say some things that uh, might surprise you. Anyways, um, but, uh, you know, a red flashlight is, a, is definitely going to be your friend. Uh, and then the other thing is that is going to be handy is something called a planisphere. And a planisphere can also help you plan your night, okay? Um, and so what you do is you match up the time. There's, there's time on the inner circle here. There's months and days here, and you match it all up. And then you can, yeah, there's a big one. Yeah, there's a big one. I'll grab that Yeah, one. let's grab that. That'd be a little easier to show. Right. That's right. So, <coughs> like, for right now, uh, this, is the, uh, this is November 30th, right? No, so it's the 29th. 29th. So we're going to put, let's say I'm out at 10 o'clock at night. I put this just before the November 30th line. And this is really what's up at that time. Okay. Angle it down a little bit, Scott. Kind of glare. He's yeah, shiny. Yeah, that glare. There we go. So you can see, I mean, this is just a really super handy uh, device, and um, every astronomer should have one. Well, unfortunately, they don't make them this big. This is, <laughs> this is special. <laughs> that is special. This one's special. That is special. So, um, but, uh, you know, actually, you wouldn't want one that big. This one is handy enough for you to have, uh, use that with the red flashlight to yes. kind of get your bearings. Uh, you find out where north is by using the compass on your tripod. There's north. You put the little center grommet here towards the north, and then you'll start to recognize the constellations up in the sky. You and will. So it's that, very handy. That's very handy. And then with the star app, you'll be able to point at those constellations and go, aha, that's where that is. And then from there, you know, you just start going deeper and more and more into it. And so... Uh, astronomy is a never-ending kind of thing, um, and you'll find out that with four and a half inches of <laughs> aperture, you're going to be able to find the broad uh, variety of celestial objects up there. Yep. So that means galaxies, nebula, star clusters, um, of course the moon. You're going to see craters on the moon, uh, mountain ridges on the moon. It's beautiful. You'll, you'll observe that during its phases. Uh, Watch for the planets. These things are dancing, you know, they're making this dance across the sky. And the moment of opposition will, will be a moment that, um, uh, that any planetary enthusiast, that's something that they really cherish because the planet's getting physically closer. It looks physically larger. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to be very cool. And so that's going to happen to Mars on December 8th. We didn't talk about the smartphone. We didn't yet. talk about that. So... There's also another cool thing that this thing does, okay? And that it is... It steps up the game to everything It else. does. It does. So uh, if you have... Um, Since one phone's being currently occupied, <laughs> by showing well, you... Well, if you have are. a second phone, <laughs> and a lot of people do, um, but uh, this thing comes out. Okay, so once you're on something, let's say like you're on the moon, you can start to take some beginning astrophotographs. Yes, sir. Right? Of the moon and planets with this and then so all you do is you go into your phone you turn on the camera <laughs> and you'll focus up you'll focus up the moon or whatever that you got in there and you'll place this over it and you know this has got suction cups to hold the camera in place, and then you take pictures. It, it, so you can do video, you can do still shots. So fun stuff. Works just like that. Great fun stuff. 
And it's a great price, so you're going to find uh, you know, that it makes for a nice uh, setup overall. So again, just to kind of go over the features with you, we have a full-size aluminum you know, metal tripod. Yep. You've got a smooth alt-as or tilt pan, if you're a photographer, tilt and pan uh, uh, <coughs> adjustment on the head. So there's no polar alignment for you to learn or anything no, like sir. that. You've got the compass. You've got a handle that doubles as an altitude lock and also a uh, way to handle the telescope and mm -hmm. point it. Okay. Correct. You've got the uh, Bluetooth uh, uh, holder here, and it, and it has... It has an actual crosshair. Yeah, it has a crosshair, so you use that to find, to get it aimed on the moon or get it aimed on a bright star or something of interest. You come in with the lowest power eyepiece, and you may have to adjust it just a little bit. That's normal. You're also going to find out that the Earth is turning kind of fast, okay? Um, so the Earth is on, spinning on its axis 1,000 miles an hour. Uh, and when you're looking in the eyepiece and you have a friend that's waiting there, uh, you know, you get it centered up, and then you have your friend come in and look almost right away, okay? The higher power you have, the faster things seem to move out of the eyepiece. Okay, mm -hmm. so low power eyepiece is cool. You get it set up in there, and you go, wow, that's really, that's very nice. Then you can, if you want to show a higher power, you could jump to your Barlow lens, put that in, drop it in again. Realign it back up. Realign back up, right? because you're probably going to lose it here. Get it focused again, and there you go. So you'll get good. You'll, you'll actually get a feel and a touch for the telescope as you use it more and more. But, uh, you know, and it's all about practice. Uh, once repetition. you kind of, yeah. It's all repetition. Right? Every bit of it. So when I got started in amateur astronomy and I started learning how to find things like the globular star cluster in Hercules, mm -hmm. I found the... And that's Orion fact. Nebula. Oh, they're beautiful. They're beautiful. And it, the, the globular cluster here locally, that thing is faint. Yeah. It's very, very faint. Right. And you figured something with that many stars it would just be a, a bulb. A <laughs> right. <just> giant <laughs> light bulb. Right. No, it is very, very faint. If it looks faint to you, then, and you want to get to where you can see them even better, then you go outside the city. Yep. And you find a spot where there's like no white lights around for miles, okay? And if you can look up at the sky and see the Milky Way stretching ahead, you know that you're going to get some good deep sky observing in. Yep. So, um, you know, uh, you'll find also that uh, dark skies are something you'll want to protect. There are societies that are all about the prevention of light pollution, and so that, that's important for amateur astronomers. But uh, you're going to go on a journey that never stops. And no. so anyhow, thanks for tuning in. Uh, this is our you know, unboxing and assembly of the National Geographic Star App 114 Telescope. Uh, Tomorrow. Tomorrow, that's right. Uh, we're let, going me go, to... let me go get that because that's, that's a heavy one. <laughs> that's a heavy one. Well... You can get the big, that box. Okay, so tomorrow we're going to go to a big telescope. This is, this is the box for the base of this telescope. And believe it or not, that is the... That's the OTA. That's the optical tube assembly, the OTA. And this is an 8-inch uh, yep. telescope, Dobsonian, which could also make a great beginner telescope. Of okay. course. Uh, because with more light, it's easier to find... Uh, hey, that was named after a guy, too. That's right. John Dobson. John Dobson, <laughs> right. And uh, this is a Newtonian telescope. So you got Isaac Newton, John Dobson. It's cool. We're going to do this tomorrow. Uh, I know. And um, so um, thanks for tuning in. Yeah. Anything yeah. that you'd like to add before we go? The best thing about getting a telescope, Scott, is you can always upgrade eyepieces. Did you know that? I did know that. You can always get. I did know that. You can get. Yep. Yeah, you want a better view through your telescope, just by improving the eyepieces. You're going to have good eyepieces coming with the telescope, but there are better. There's always better out there. That's right.
That's right. And that's what we always, I always recommend is if you can never have too many eyepieces, especially with a Barlow. I always recommend three for sure. Mm -hmm. That way, if you have a Barlow, then you get six. It's um, like having six eyepieces. <clears throat> so six eyepieces is amazing. It gets you, it covers the, the high magnification all the way to the low. So you're getting in between and everything. And the 52 degree series is always a great start for sure. They go all the way up to 120, but unfortunately, this one can't handle 120 degree no. field of view because it requires a two inch focuser. <laughs> but an inch and a quarter. Yep. All we day long. A, there, are, there are some beautiful there are. Uh, eyepieces that fit right into this telescope. And so. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll yeah. show you real quick. There you go. Yep. Scott's out that's of frame. That's okay. I'm out of frame. He's out of frame. But the telescope's in frame, and that's most important. That is the most important part. Right. So even an inch and a quarter, a little bit better of an eyepiece, will unlock a whole lot more. Right. It really will. That's right. The contrast will be uh, more improved. The field of view will look wider to you, which is more pleasing. Yes. Your eye uh, will actually be able to back away from the eyepiece more, so you have more eye relief, which equals comfort. And what makes you a, a better, gives you a better observation than, in other, than you would have otherwise is how relaxed you are at the eyepiece. So, yep. um, you know, so you want to take long looks through the eyepiece, not just like a few seconds and looking at something and walking well, away. The longer you look, the more that you're actually going to see. That's right. That's and right. that's the whole Bennett and the added point. Is the longer you look at something, you'll be amazed of what more you can see. Because if you, with this telescope, if you look at Andromeda long enough, you will see the dark arms of Andromeda. Right. If you look at it long enough. Right. Even in my backyard, in a Bortle 6 slash 7, depending on which side I look at. And that, I that's a light pollution scale. So, yeah. Right. Bortle 6 or 7 is kind of light polluted. You can... You can't read a book outside, but no. but you can definitely see the book in your hand. Okay, yes. <laughs> Bortle one or two, the book disappears. It's so dark. Okay, so yeah. right. Anyhow, uh, that's it. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you tomorrow. Make sure you tune in tomorrow, Dobbs.